Hi, Remington from Southern Shoddy 3D here. Just when you thought Blender couldn't get any better, the devs found a genie, made a wish, gained divine dev powers, and here we are with Blender 2.9. Let's go through all those new features in less than five minutes, and if you want a full rundown of the list, take a look at the link in the description below. Let's get started. Modifiers now support drag and drop reordering, making it much easier to organize large modifier groups. Menu options are now located on the right side of the panel headers as well. Scene statistics are now available in the 3D viewport, and you can enable options in the status bar at the bottom. A new tool, Extrude Manifold, lets you automatically split and remove adjacent faces when extruding inwards. The Bevel Custom Profile now supports Bezier handles. The UV Editor now supports more selection functions, including Edge Ring Select and Pick Shortest Path. You can now press the V key to rip UV edges, giving you more control over your UV maps. Curve Handles can now be hidden, selected, or all, and the Ocean Modifier now can generate maps for spray direction. A new Save Shape Key option allows you to apply a modifier as a shape key with without removing it. If you're impatient, then you'll be happy to hear Blender's getting even faster. Intel Embry is now used for ray tracing on CPU rendering, significantly improving render times on scenes with motion blur. Optics is now available on all GPUs with support, Maxwell or higher. NVLink support for CUDA and Optics, which helps when rendering larger scenes. Two new hair shapes to choose when rendering, rounded ribbon for fast rendering, and 3D curve for accurate close-up renderings. If you don't have Optics, you can now use Intel Open Image Denoising in the viewport. The new Sky Texture accounts for altitude change and ozone absorption, meaning there's even less reason for Blender users to go outside to see the real sky. Per object, Shadow Terminator offset settings have been added to avoid artifacts on low poly meshes, which is ultra exciting for those low poly artists and people on lower spec machines. Eevee now supports motion blur for mesh deformation, hair, and has better precision. Sky texture has also been added to Eevee. Multi-res sculpting is now fully supported and you can switch between subdivision levels with displacement information smoothly propagated between them. Multi-res can now rebuild lower subdivision levels and extract its displacement. It can also now create smooth, linear, and simple subdivisions, meaning any subdivision type can be created at any time. And I guess creating the amazing cloth brush wasn't enough, so in an effort to show off even more, the devs flexed and made it so that now you can run an entire cloth simulation in sculpt mode. The pose brush has two new deformation modes and a face set FK mode utilizing the face sets to simulate an FK rig. A bunch of other improvements have been made to the tools. Reference the link in the description for you detail-oriented viewers. A ton of little things add up to make Grease Pencil feel even more polished. Including onion support for annotations in the video sequencer, layer mask and use light properties are now animatable, new material selector in a context menu using the U key, new option to put camera grid in front of objects, keyframes are now accessible using Python, reproject stroke that allows you to keep original strokes now, annotate line tool supports new arrow types and has a mouse stabilizer, new randomized effects in the brush options, improved selection of strokes and fill paints, there's a new texture mapping modifier for UV data, a new restrict visible points build parameter, new anti-aliasing options in the pixel effect. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, okay, let's keep going. Tons of fixes to import and export options have been implemented, but in short, Olympic USD and GLTF 2.0 have all seen improvements to their import-export supported functions. New operators and types have been added to landmarks when using Blender's VR function. Full scene copying has been improved. There's a new ray length setting which limits how far rays can travel when baking. A new lens distortion mode has been added to motion tracking, allowing you to solve motion in Blender and composite in Nuke. Frame interpolation has been added to the speed effect in the sequencer. There's some new additions and changes to the Python API that I'm too dumb to explain, but a full list can be seen in the link in the description for all you dev wizards. Open VDB fluid caching will now cache in a single cache frame file per frame, and several bug fixes and UI tweaks for a better experience. And now Cloth has a new option to apply a pressure gradient to emulate the weight of contained or surrounding fluid. Rigging has seen some advanced improvements, with many more properties being overridable with library overrides such as constraints, modifiers, and camera object data. A new depth graph variable has been added to the drivers, allowing drivers to get to the current dependency graph. For those that actually organize their files, one of the Blender's best add-ons has seen a number of new features making it even more useful than before. The Collection Manager has various new options to make organizing your collections in the viewport easy as ever. As usual, there are hundreds of bug fixes, minor features, and improvements, which of course can be seen at the link in the description below. And why don't you show Blender some love and support Blender by joining the development fund?